Hey everyone, this is Dr. Peter Hentevi for another edition of the Hentevi Minute. Now you know how much we love the distal femoral I.O. in pediatric cardiac arrest, but now there's an amazing new study just published in resuscitation by San Antonio Fire Department that shows it's just as good in adults. So what did the study show? Starting in 2016, they changed their protocol, allowing paramedics to use one of three sites, proximal humerus, distal femur, or proximal tibia. They ended up looking at the data from only 2017 and 2018. There were 2,016 IOs placed along those three sites. And interestingly, the success rate was highest in the distal femur and the proximal humerus. That's a 95% success rate compared to only 87% success in the proximal tibia. Okay, so for adult cardiac arrest, we know that many of you prefer the proximal humerus. Let's compare the two. Let's compare the fact that the proximal humerus and the distal femur both have equal flow rates at 100 to 105 cc's per minute. But what's the advantage of the distal femur? Number one, it's away from the action. The distal femur does not get in the way of chest compressions. It does not get in the way of any automated CPR device, and it doesn't affect anyone up at the airway. That distal femoral IO will not get snagged, and then it will not get dislodged. The femoral bone is thicker, that cortex will allow that I.O. to stay in, and that's evidenced by the fact that there were only 10% dislodgements compared to 15 or 16% dislodgements of the proximal humerus and the proximal tibia. So you're probably wondering, how do I place a distal femoral I.O. in the adult? Well, it's relatively simple, and we're very fortunate to have a video from Dr. David Miramontes and Scotty Bolliter from San Antonio. So it's two finger breaths above the patella at the midline, and it's perpendicular right down into the bone. Let's take a look at this video. So that's two fingers above the top of the patella. You're finding your spot in the midline. Okay. Find your mark. Now make sure you're perpendicular to that bone. Gently push down until you touch the bone. Got okay, it. so you're a little bit. So now here's the thing. You have to be mindful of the position of your patient's leg because you see the way her foot is? Yeah. I'm gonna straighten him up just a little bit. That is perpendicular, but if she were posturing, See, I have to change your angle. Mm -hmm. You always have to be perpendicular with the bone. So now you're perpendicular. Okay. So now all he's going to do is just squeeze the trigger, and when he feels it fall in, he's going to take his finger off the trigger. Go ahead. Beautifully done. Beautifully. Stabilize this right here and lift straight off of that driver. Three counterclockwise turns, and that stylet comes out. Sharp. Hmm. Okay, so grab that. Don't you move that hand completely. Remember, it was designed to be applied with one hand. Okay. Give yourself some slack. Go ahead and aspirate. Just hold a little bit of tension. A couple. A couple. I'll go back. Okay, so that was an excellent video. What did you notice there? Did you notice how that femoral IO was spinning for a while before it got into the bone? That's excellent, and that's because the femoral bone is thicker, and now we know that that needle will have a much harder time of dislodging. That's what we want. All right, so what are the takeaways here? We now know that we have a peer-reviewed study that demonstrates we can use the distal femur for the adult in cardiac arrest to get easy, rapid access that's gonna stick, it's not gonna dislodge, with flow rates that are just as good as the proximal humerus. We want to thank the folks at San Antonio. Let's keep this going. If you have any questions, please let us know. This has been Dr. Peter Antevi for another edition of the Antevi Minute.